Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mary Paul Cowers. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today we're continuing this series on how to improve your thyroid physiology. So in this little series, what I want to do is talk to you about the things that you can do that doesn't that don't require a functional medicine practitioner. Uh, but these are things that you can do at home on your own to improve your overall health and well-being, not just your thyroid physiology. So originally we talked about the, what I call the fitness factors, and Kelly and I talk about these in the book, and we give a longer explanation of these things in part three of the book. But we originally started with dietary fitness, then we covered sleep fitness, respiratory fitness, and emotional fitness last time. Today we're talking about physical fitness. So physical fitness is what? What does that mean? There's lots of definitions. Here's the one we give you in the book, and that is the ability to perform daily physical activities and be moderately adaptable uh, to unfamiliar physical activities without fatigue, pain, or uh, restriction of motion. So, you know, most of us are conditioned to do what we do every day. If we sit at a desk every day, we're conditioned to do that. If, we're, uh, if we are a construction worker, we're conditioned to do that. But it doesn't necessarily mean we have a higher level of physical fitness. So what we should be able to do is, even though I may work at my desk on a regular basis, if I need to, um, you know, go unload a truckload of bricks or tiles, I should be able to go do that without really struggling with pain or injury uh, and have restrictions in doing that, right? So I should be able to go into an environment and be adaptable to that environment and do the things I need to do to adapt, survive, and thrive, okay? So that's our definition of physical fitness. And then we've got some components that make up physical fitness. So one of those components is strength. How strong are you? Upper body, lower body, core, grip strength. All these are key things. I'll talk to you about some tests that we can use to assess these things. Flexibility. How much flexibility? That's really important. So you need to have not just uh, strength, but you actually have to have some flexibility. And flexibility along with mobility. So I talked to you about the differences between flexibility and mobility in the book. So I won't go into them here, but I'm gonna give you a test of how you can assess each one of these. Then we talk about uh, cardiorespiratory fitness, so aerobic fitness. So I'll talk to you about the way to assess your aerobic capacity. Um, then we've got stability, how stable are you? So I'll talk about a simple test to check your stability. This is a combination of strength and your nervous system physiology. Posture, really, really important. So how do you assess your posture? And lastly, I on here, a uh, really easy thing that you can use to assess uh, physical fitness is your resting heart rate. So we typically shoot for a resting heart rate somewhere in the 50 to 60 range is probably more optimal as you start to creep up in the 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s as a resting heart rate. That's probably not a very good sign of good physical and metabolic health. Okay, so how can we easily assess strength at home? Um, easy way to do assess strength, uh, there's four components that we talk about here, and one of those is grip strength. So grip strength, pretty well known uh, to be a really good indicator of your overall health and well-being. And so there are instruments you can squeeze and it'll measure your overall grip strength, but a really easy test to do at home, grab onto a bar, and hold on to that bar, uh, feet off the ground, of course, as long as you can. See how long your grip can hold out to keep you held up. So that's an easy strength test. Now, you can Google online. There's some, um, da there's some data that kind of says, hey, this is uh, poor, this is average, this is above average. Or you could just mark down what your score is. And if it's, um, as you in work to increase your physical fitness, retest yourself on a regular basis and see if your stamina, how long your endurance, how long you can hold on gets longer with time. That's a good in indication that you're increasing your overall fitness. Uh, how do we check our upper body strength? Well, again, you can do the, what's called the push-up test. Google the push-up test and it'll tell you for your age, your sex, how, how many push-ups is considered uh, average, below average, and above average, okay? So push-up test, another simple test, right? Good push-ups, elbows, uh, right up against the body, drop into the floor, push it all the way up, that's one, right? So you wanna keep your body nice and straight, all the way down the floor, push back up, that's a push up, look up the push up test. Lower back, lower body strength test, how can we check that? Two tests, vertical jump, simple test. There's again, there's data online. If you, if you Google for the vertical test, how high you can jump is a pretty good assessment of the power and strength in your legs. 
Second thing, if you don't want to be jumping because maybe you got bad knees or hips, do a wall sit. So put your feet and sit up like against the wall. Your legs are at 90 degree angle, back flat against the wall. See how long you can sit there without your legs giving out on you. How long you can do that is a good sign of your overall health and well-being. And again, for most of these tests, there is a, uh, a range of what's considered poor, normal, or above average. Core strength plank test. There's a three minute plank test. So look up the three minute plank test, and that is a great assessment of your core strength. So for strength, we're talking about, um, we talked about grip test, we talked about a push up test, we talked about a wall squat or a vertical jump or both. And then for the core, we talk about the three minute plank test is a great test for physical, for physical strength. For flexibility, super simple. Sit on the ground, legs extended, see how far you can reach out, take a tape measure, see how far you can reach great indication of your flexibility. Um, for mobility, for the mobility test, I like the two inch wall test. So essentially what you're doing is putting your heels about two inches away from the wall and you want to see how far you can bend down without hitting the wall, right? So can you get to a full squat where your butt's hitting the back of your calves or can you only get so far because your butt's going back? So that's a really good mobility test. You wanna make it a little bit harder, do that same test with your arms up in the air and see how far you can go down before you hit the wall. Remember, your heels are about two inches off the wall. Um, stability, one leg stand test. Some people can, can't do this. We do, used to do this in, in the office quite a bit with patients who had uh, problems with their nervous system, especially with neuropathy. But essentially what you're doing is you're just bringing your leg up and you're holding your leg at 90 degrees and you're trying to stand there for 20 seconds, okay? Each leg you should be able to stand there, eyes open 20 seconds. Uh, if you're doing pretty good, second part of that test, close your eyes, you should be able to hold your balance again for 20 seconds. If you do that, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, if you can't even get your leg up and hold it up, you got some work to do for stability. Posture, really easy assessment for posture. Put your heels against the wall, put your back against the wall, shoulders against the wall, head should be able to be flat against the wall. All those things should be flat against the wall and you shouldn't be able to get more than maybe a fist worth of space uh, between your, the small of your lower back and the wall. If your back is really arched to get your shoulders and your butt against the wall and your head against the wall, uh, you got some work to do, okay? So these are the components. Here's some simple tests you can do. Uh, if you have questions, obviously, put, give me some questions. Uh, wherever you're watching this video, put a comment below and I'll try and get some information back to you. So what do you do? What do you take away from this one? Uh, have, do these tests, you know, watch this a couple times, write the test down, Google the tests, make sure you know how to do them right. And then look up what maybe the, uh, parameters are for below average, normal, above average for your age, maybe your age and your sex. So do all these tests, note them. And then start incorporating all of these components, strength, flexibility, mobility, cardiorespiratory training, stability, and posture work into your weekly routine. Um, if you do that, you're going to raise your level of physical fitness, but you should try and work on all of these. So during the week, you know, I guess my morning routine, in case you care, morning is some type of cardio. I get up probably about 40, minutes to an hour of cardio. So it's either running, it's either bike, it may be the rower, um, but it may be hit type endurance, it may be longer training, but every morning is typically cardio. And then each evening, it's either strength training, mobility or flexibility um, in the evening. And all the times I'm working on things, to, from an exercise perspective, I'm working on things that are gonna keep me improving my upright body posture, okay? So it's all part of the piece, but if I really was rolled over, I'd be accentuating those things as part of my workout routine, okay? So this was physical fitness. Um, this is part six in our series. If you have any questions, reach out to me in the comments. If you haven't done it yet, pick up a copy of The Thyroid Debacle. This is the book I wrote with Dr. Kelly Halderman. It's out now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and uh, Balboa Press's uh, store.